I'm not that old, but when I look back on things that have changed in my life, I kind of go back to video games and things like Atari. You're playing Pong and it's going back and forth and everything's moving in a 2D fashion. And you fast forward to now 2018 and you look at, you look at what's out there and the world with virtual technology and, and what's inside your pocket is a supercomputer by 1980 standards. But when we look at prosthetics, and we look at the upper limb market especially, why hasn't upper limb technology grown at the same pace as, say, other electronic products? So when we put that in front of the engineering group, and we say to them, what would it take to bring this current model up to date? They went to the drawing board and really beat it up hard and, and, and came to the conclusion that we couldn't leave the old elbow as it was. I think this is the largest project in College Park history. Being a group of engineers, we design things more in the functional approach. However, we wanted to really address the need that someone is wearing this every day. It needs to have the look and the feel that is appropriate. When we reached out to Altair, it came clear that they had the skill set to help us design and develop the shape and the look and the feel that we would want in our new elbow. We do everything from toys and commodity products all the way up to aerospace and, and high-end uh, Internet of Things type of stuff. But prosthetics is an area that it's really near and dear to us. This is an intimate product. This is a product that becomes part of you. you you're going to carry it through life. The first thing we had to go sit down with was the demographic. So all of a sudden we've got a 21 to 64 year old uh, demographic, male and female. That had the team on edge a little bit in the beginning because that meant a lot of research. How do you develop a product that is good for that range, that both is accepting to? There's this thing called the uncanny valley. There's the point of where something just totally doesn't look like what it should be. And then there's that point of where it's so real that you have to look at it twice to see that it isn't. And then there's the part where it's just a little bit creepy. It's kind of real, kind of not. And when you, when you look at end users, they're all over the place. Some people want to look techy, and some want it to look real. So finding a balance in between there, um, this design did that. First and foremost, we think about the patient because they are the one that takes this home. They're the one that uses it. In terms of the design, the shape, how it functions, that's where we really stress the user. We want to meet their requirements, what their preferences are, how it moves, you know, trying to make it as lightweight as possible. Where are the power buttons? How do you take the battery out? How do you charge the system? When you think about what a prosthetist is up against, with anything upper extremity, probably the biggest challenge is there are no standards out there. And that means the product has to have a certain level of tunability or freedom to be able to uh, be customized or adjusted. The wrist is round. And so that is a limiting factor, right? We, we have to be able to attach different hands. So how do you make that not look like a long tube? That's all done through the design of the product. We wanted to do two sizes. We wanted to do a small and a standard to accommodate um, the two different wrist sizes most popular. It's a lot more tooling and expense and engineering, but we wanted to have that solution for our users. Human nature, we want to sit like, we, we don't normally sit like this, but every product we looked at, it was palms up. We thought this can't be the, the, the biggest uncovering, but it was one of them. So we had this meeting with College Park that we were pretty excited about. My team was cued that at a certain slide, we were gonna put ourselves in an awkward position. We were, gonna, we were gonna slowly try to do it without being caught, put our palms up, and then ask the whole entire room to just freeze. And that was like a really eye-opening experience that they were like, what we are proposing is we are twisting the shape into what is the most natural anatomical resting or just standing state. With that kind of turning of the hands or the palms, um, it gave us the shape for the left and the right. So it all kind of just naturally happened. So finally, once we've put together the industrial design, which was the shell and the anatomical look and the motor and the gearbox, we got the Aspire Elbow. 
we've tried to pull all the best features of all the products available and put them into our elbow. We wanted to make sure that we designed a product that would stand the test of time and be able to keep moving forward just as technology keeps moving forward. Now that Altair has um, presented us this amazing design, the next uh, things are figuring out all the internal components and getting those all to operate appropriately. On paper, everything always looks great, but in real life, it's sometimes a different story. So in the engineering world, we are designing something and we are trying to take all these needs in and we think we found a solution that will be great. However, until we put it all together and make it, we'll have to see what our results are.